In this video, I want to work through five short examples of evaluating definite integrals using a graph and geometric formulas. Remember, when you evaluate a definite integral, you're really finding the area of the region bound between the graph of the function and the x-axis. Remember that if the region is above the x-axis, the area is considered positive, and if the region is below the x-axis, the area is negative. What you're looking at now is the graph of f, which is our function. It's a piecewise function, and the domain is from x equals negative 3 to x equals 4. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our first integral. It's going to be the integral from negative 1 to 1 of our function. Well, if we're looking at a region bound by the function in the x-axis, it's going to look like this. Okay, so I've shaded it green because it's above the x-axis, which means it's ultimately going to be positive. All right, so if we're going to use geometric formulas to evaluate these integrals, well, we have a semicircle here. How do you find the area of a semicircle? Well, it's going to be 1 half pi r squared. Okay, it's a half circle. So the radius of this particular circle is 1, so when we plug that into our formula, we have 1 half pi times 1 squared, and of course 1 squared is 1 times a half is a half. So what we have here for our area is pi over 2. So what we can say about this integral is that when we evaluate it, the value is pi over 2. Okay, so it's as easy as that, and that's our first example. So let's move on to our second example. So here's our fresh graph. And the integral we're going to look for now is the integral from 3 to 1 of our function f of x with respect to x. But you'll notice our limits of integration are kind of backwards from what they normally are. Instead of going from a smaller number to a larger number, we're going from 3 to 1. So what we can do is we can switch those limits of integration, and we can go from 1 to 3 instead, but in order to make that possible, we need to put a negative out front, because that's the property for definite integrals. All right, so now that we're looking at it from 1 to 3, well, what shape does that make between the graph and the x-axis? It looks like a triangle. Okay, that's nice, and it's green because it's above the x-axis, so how do we find the area of a triangle? Well, it's one-half the base times the height. So our formula is here, and what is the base? Well, it looks like two units from one to three. And what's the height? Well, that looks like one unit from zero up to one. So when we plug that in the formula, we'll see one-half times two times one will give us one. So the area of that triangle is going to be one square unit which means when I put it into my integral, it's also going to be 1. But remember, we switched the limits of integration at the beginning, so we had a negative out front. So our solution is actually going to be negative 1. And again, that came down to the fact that we had to change our limits of integration because our original definite integral went from 3 to 1 instead of 1 to 3. Okay, let's go ahead and refresh our graph. So the third example that we're going to look at is going to be the integral from negative 3 to negative 2 of our function f with respect to x. So graphically, this is what this looks like. So we have a green triangle that's above the x-axis and a red triangle that's below the x-axis. And keep in mind that the area of the regions that we're looking for are always between the function itself and the x-axis. So we see at negative 2.25 is where the graph of the function actually moves from positive to negative, hence why the areas change from green to red, okay? So, well, how can we find the area of these triangles? Well, we have two triangles. The green is above the x-axis, so we know he'll be positive, and the red is below the x-axis, so we know he'll be negative. All right, so we have our formula here. It's 1 half base times height, and then we're subtracting from that 1 half base times height. And of course, I've color-coded it. The green is positive and the red is negative, and that's why we're subtracting that red one. Okay, so what are the units now? It looks like the base for the green triangle is 0.75, and the height is 1.5, so we can plug that in the formula. And for the red triangle, it looks like the base is going to be just 0.25, and the height is going to be 0.5, so we can put it in the formula like that. So when we go ahead and multiply these decimals together, we'll have this, 
And when we go ahead and divide them each by two, we'll have this. And then let's go ahead and make that subtraction, and it looks like 0.5. So the value of this integral from negative 3 to negative 2 is actually 0.5. So remember, the, the total area of the shaded regions isn't 0.5 because the green had more than the red, but since the red was negative below the x-axis, we subtracted that out. So that's where our 0.5 comes from. We had more positive than negative, so we went ahead and did that subtraction. Okay, so let's clear it out again and look at our fourth example. So we're gonna do the integral from four to two of our function with respect to x. But notice once again, we have our uh, limits of integration are kind of backwards, 4 to 2. So let's go ahead and change those around. We'll say negative, and then we'll make them 2 to 4 instead. So graphically, here's where these uh, regions are going to be. All right, well, it looks like we have two triangles. They look like isosceles right triangles. And actually, they look pretty identical to me. The only exception is that the green is above the x-axis and the red is below the x-axis. But it looks like for both triangles, the base is 1, the height is 1. So the area is going to be 1 half square unit for each one of those. But 1 is positive and 1 is negative. So when I subtract, I actually get 0. So what we can say then is the area is 0. So when we evaluate this definite integral, it's also going to be zero. So let's go ahead and clear our graph out one last time. So here's our fifth and final example. We're looking to evaluate the integral here. We have negative three as a constant out front of our integral. And we're looking for the integral from negative five halves to negative one of our function with respect to x. So here's what that shaded region looks like. And again, I've used the same color coding where our green region is positive and above the x-axis, and our red region is negative and below the x-axis. And it looks like we have a lot more red than we do green, so our area should end up being negative, which then when we multiply by the negative three out front of the integral, we should end up with a positive value for this expression. Okay, well I'm gonna do a little something like we saw in the last example, where I had a region uh, above the x-axis and below the x-axis, and they were equal, okay? So we were able to just cancel them out. So let's go ahead and look at some of this green region with some of this red region, and we'll make it purple. So what we see is all of our positive and some of that stuff that was negative can actually cancel out. So we can ignore now the purple regions because they cancel each other out and give us zero. So really the only thing we need to concern ourselves with is this red triangle that's left over, and our x values are going from negative two to negative one. So when we look at this formula, it's area equals, and I have negative one half base times height because of course this area is negative, okay, below the x-axis. So the base is one, and the height looks like 0.5. So when I put that into all of the formula, it looks like that. And our final multiplication will look like this, negative one-fourth. So let's go ahead and take this negative one-fourth and put them up here at the top and multiply them by the negative three. That was the constant out front of our integral. So when I multiply negative three times negative one-fourth, I get positive three-fourths. And we knew it was going to be positive because we kind of worked that out at the beginning of the problem. So what you've seen here, we started with a piecewise function, f of x. We looked at the graph. And we went ahead and evaluated five different integrals based on this graph, and we did so using geometric formulas instead of trying to work actual definite integrals using our fundamental theorem of calculus. So this is a nice conceptual way to view this. So hopefully that was helpful, and be sure to subscribe to my channel for more upcoming math videos.